So the Canon EOS R5 is finally here. You can now order it online or at your favorite camera supplier. If you haven't heard already, the EOS R5 body alone will cost 3,999 US or around 6,900 Australian. But for those of you still on the fence trying to decide whether to pull the trigger or not, I thought it would be timely to have a look at the pros and cons of buying into this new release and whether it's worth spending all that money for a couple of jaw dropping features that you may or may not even use. I produced a full specification overview video at the time of the official announcement a few weeks ago. And in that video, I go through all of the specifications and features and how it compares to the EOS R6 and the first generation EOS R. So if you want more information on the specs, I'll leave a link to the video that I created on that topic in the description box below. But what I wanna talk about today is the emphasis that is being placed on the 8K video and whether you're going to need it at all. The way I see it, in an ailing economy where camera sales are dropping and profitability is diminishing, it's becoming harder for camera manufacturers to stay competitive. Even though Canon has been at the top, they face significant competition from other manufacturers, especially when it comes to video. Sony, Panasonic, Fujifilm have all taken significant market share over the years and Canon took far too long to step up to the mark with their first generation EOS R full frame mirrorless camera released in October 2018. This delay in innovation cost them dearly as many loyal Canon fans were lured over to Sony who had refined and developed the A7 and A9 series with industry leading specs and video capabilities. When Canon released the original EOS R, it was met with mixed emotions. Sure, they did a lot of things right, a compact body, good ergonomics, a flip out screen, improved autofocus, backwards compatibility with previous lenses using the RF to EF adapter and more. But they were widely criticized for some glaring emissions, namely the lack of IBIS or in-body image stabilization, a failure to include dual card slots for pro shooters and a somewhat ill-conceived touch bar that just wasn't well appreciated by reviewers and the general public. So despite being a decent release and selling quite well, if Canon were to release an update to the EOS R lineup, it had to be something special, a specification that could command the headlines and appeal to the growing litany of social media commentators and get them excited. So what do we get? 8K raw video with dual pixel autofocus, IBIS in body image stabilization, dual memory cards and everything everyone could ever want from this camera. Sounds great, right? I mean, who wouldn't want access to all of that? But before you get too carried away by all the hype, let's take a look at the reality of these features and how much of it has been created for the pure purpose of marketing against how much you're actually gonna wanna shoot in 8K and use it on a daily basis. Now think of the ludicrous mode plus that you get on the Tesla Model S P100D, a high performance mode that you can put your car into and get a mind blowing zero to 60 miles per hour in 2.4 seconds. Now, if you're not into cars, I can tell you that no production vehicle has ever cracked the 2.4 second mark. So this is indeed a spectacular feature. You'll see it countless times on social media, which in effect acts as free marketing for Tesla as you watch the Model S kick the ass out of Lambos and Ferraris time and time again. An impressive feature that can be used to demonstrate Tesla's technical supremacy and is of great appeal to those with an insatiable need for speed. But if you look into the practicality of ludicrous mode and whether you'd ever use it, it's a completely different story. When you initiate ludicrous mode plus, a new screen will pop up warning you that enabling this mode may accelerate wear on the motor gearbox and battery and you then get two options the first one is no i want my mummy or yes bring it on of course you must choose the latter to continue and when you do the screen will inform you that the battery is being warmed up in preparation for maximum power so essentially tesla are telling you that this feature is not intended to be used on a regular basis as over time you may experience some negative effects if overused reduce battery life and vehicle range, and of course, driving at that kind of speed 
is most likely going to get you into all sorts of trouble with the law. And in the same way, the 8K video mode on the Canon EOS R comes with its limitations. You might not get a pop-up screen asking you to choose between your mummy and your insatiable need for speed, but there are going to be certain limitations when shooting in 8K using the brand new Canon EOS R5. First of all, the recording time is not only cut down to 20 minutes, but the heat generated by shooting in 8K is going to prevent you from recording for a further eight minutes after each recording session. So for any kind of long form content, professional shooting scenarios could be severely slowed down or restricted. Then there's the battery. I haven't heard of the exact figure yet, but I can tell you based on my experience with the current EOS R, which is shooting this video, even when I shoot in 4K, I only get around 30 minutes recording before the battery drains. So even with the upgraded battery on the EOS R5, it's likely that recording time will be severely limited. Next is the storage, and we can expect that shooting 8K RAW at 30 frames per second can fill up 128 gigabyte CF Express Type B cards in around four to five minutes. So you're going to need four times 128 gigabyte cards just for that one 20 minute recording I spoke about, and that's going to be well over $1,000 of memory cards right there. Finally, the thing that very few have considered when talking about this feature is how on earth are you going to edit in 8K video? Most of us are running MacBook Pros or iMacs, and even the most highly spec machine is going to struggle playing 8K on the timeline, and rendering times are also going to be up to at least two to four times longer than you're accustomed to when you're editing in 4K or 1080p. So if you wanna be able to edit, you're going to have to create proxy files, which is going to add more time and effort into your workflow. And that really does put a downer on the whole experience. Once again, just like the ludicrous mode on a Tesla, for most, 8K will only be used sparingly under certain conditions. And for most, it's probably going to lie dormant and underutilized. So when it comes down to it, before you spend all of that hard-earned cash and the $3,999, we're talking about a lot of cash here, have a think about whether 8K RAW and 4K 120 FPS are absolutely necessary. And if not, you could certainly consider the EOS R6, which has most of the same feature set as the R5, minus the 8K and 4K 120 FPS, yet delivers the most important updates, including IBIS, non-crop 4K, and 12 frames and 20 frames per second mechanical and electronic shutter speeds for still shooting. Now, given that the Sony A7 Mark III was just announced today, I can't finish this video without a quick mention of the main differences for those of you considering the two options. Now, this was a much anticipated release, and in terms of a full frame mirrorless camera, it is the closest competitor to the brand new Canon EOS R5. Now, first of all, it tops out at 4K video, 120 frames per second, 10 bit with 422 internal, you get IBIS, but only five stops compared to the eight stops of stabilization on the new EOS R5. In terms of image sensor, it has the same 12.1 megapixel sensor as the previous A7S, which looks paltry compared to the new 45 megapixel sensor that you get on the new EOS R5. The A7S 3 physical design includes a rear LCD with side open articulating design and dual memory card slots. Both support CF Express Type A or SD UHS 2 memory cards. So, a fair upgrade for Sony users looking to get their hands on the update. But really, the only benefit I see here is the ability to shoot 4K 120 for slow motion, along with the improved dynamic range and flip out screen. Sure, Sony is about $500 US cheaper, coming in around $3,499. But if you had no brand preference or existing glass that would bias your decision making, then clearly the EOS R5 wins in terms of specs and performance. And in this case, the EOS R5 is more like the Tesla, boasting its supremacy when you put it to the test against all the competition. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.